So welcome back everyone. I'm happy that you're able to join me for this new video where we're going to explore the use of Google Slides to create uh, kind of video reflection, audio reflection, or even an offline kind of work notebook. So especially in kind of an online or remote environment, one of the core principles is creating experiences that kids can navigate independently. So while we have tools like Google Classroom and Canvas or in Schoology where we can post links and assignments, um, that can be challenging and maybe a bit overwhelming to navigate. So my thought is, could we build kind of a multi-day unit or multi-day experience in Google Slides and look at that environment more as like a digital workspace, less as an environment to push out content to our kids, but also could we combine those two tools together to say we have a digital workspace where our kids can absolutely work and we can add our instructional material into it and that's what I want to demo here for you. So I've kind of mocked up what this could look like. So for example, the kids might be totally remote and on their own. And you use something like Google Classroom to make a copy of this for every student. They open up the workbook in the digital space, but they need to know how to get started. So why not use a tool, for example, like Record to Slides? So this is like hands down one of my favorite ed tech tools going right now. Uh, Clay Smith goes by Clay Codes has made this just re phenomenal tool. And what I'm going to do right now is demo the use of kind of adding record to slides to my browser. It's a Google Chrome extension. I'll kind of wait for that to install. So Google slot, excuse me, record to slides is in. Now, when I come back to any set of Google slides, what we'll see is that extension. Let me just pin that and turn that on. There it is. Record to slides. I'm going to pin that. So now record to slides is in my browser. What this tool lets you do is record front facing video and instantly drop that right into your slides. So the kids can see like a welcome video from you. You're providing some context, um, kind of explaining what their experience is gonna be like, creating some connection between you and the student that might be at home working totally independently. So framing the unit, explaining the attention, the goals, the driving question. And then when they're done watching this little video, you can say, okay, thanks for watching. Move on to the next slide, which is kind of page two of the experience. So I'm gonna to jump to slide two here. Now I've built a model that has kind of three experiences that kids might work through for the week. You can build it any way that you would want. In this model, as an example, it's like everything is clickable. So if a student wants to jump to activity one, this little arrow is clickable, this, the, the little frame here itself, the icon is clickable, and even the text box that has the activity overview, the concept, that's all clickable. I could make the text itself, so I could take like the words hyperlink and link it to slide three because that's where activity one kicks off. So I'll take the words hyperlink, go here and link that to slides in the presentation, and I'll link that to slide three and hit apply so now the student can click on that. I'll even take this little pointer arrow, right? And I'll go image is going to link to slide three, right? So I can build out all of these hyperlinks so the kids can click to navigate. So if the student is ready to work on activity one, they can click and they can click and it brings them to activity one. Now what I've done here is kind of giving you a few different things to think about. They land on activity one. Now, while we can create screen recordings with things like Screencastify, for example, I think providing a little bit of like a welcome context, maybe frame or explain what they're about to watch in kind of video form can be really helpful. So what I mean by that is, again, using something like Record to Slides, could you add a video of yourself? And I just put a little iPad to make it look nice. Could you add a video of yourself in that little frame so they go, okay, first like really clearly defined, kids can navigate this on their own. First, I'm going to watch the video that my teacher created, kind of welcoming, clarifying, explaining what's about to happen. Then phase two, over here you can drop the instructional video that you've made with Screencastify, Loom, QuickTime, kind of whatever tool you're comfortable building these videos with is what you can pick, totally personal preference. Along with being able to put the video over there, I think there's a really important consideration to make about the duration of any instructional video. So you can see here, we have some research that's been curated by Vanderbilt that points to the fact that that kind of zero to six minute mark, like really high total percentage of video watched, 
If we go to six to nine, we're still pretty good. If we go to that nine minute and beyond, it kind of drops off a cliff in terms of total percentage of video watched. So I just want you to keep that in mind if you're going to make instructional video. But I also really like the idea of kind of pairing your video here with a little bit more of like a welcome. So explain the process for them. Like, hey, when you're done watching, go click on the video right there to get the instruction, the screen recording, whatever you might do. Then when you're ready, advance to the next slide. And you can see one, two, three, advance to the next slide. Now the little home icon that I've added up here, I put the home icon in every slide so kids can click and link back to kind of slide two, which is the landing page where they can decide what they're going to work on. So now let's advance to the next slide. Here's the next part of the workspace for the kids. So what I've done here, and I just want to kind of explain my thinking behind this, and these are all kind of suggestions of what this could look like. On the left hand side, here's the kind of prompt or the challenge of what kids might work on. So step one, get an overview of the task or challenge. Now I encourage you to look at things like Project Zero's visible thinking routines. So these can be really helpful as a way for kids to do things like I used to think but now I think. Or Connect Extend Challenge, which is the one I have here. So there's a link to it. There's kind of a, a way that you can start to think about what kind of questions might I ask my students. Now again, from the student perspective, if you want the kids to add video into this notebook, they can use Record to Slides. They can turn on their front-facing camera, record the video, it goes to Google Drive and dumps in their slides automatically, and then we have a workspace that we've held for them of put your student video reflection here. If you don't have Record to Slides, they could use a screen recording. If you don't have access to either one of those, they could absolutely write this idea offline on paper, and I'll demo in a moment how they can add paper into their digital notebook. So we're done with activity two or activity one. We might click back home and get back to that kind of landing page for the day. We might close this up and come back the next day to work through this kind of self-paced experience. So now we're ready to go to activity two. We can click and jump right to activity two if we want to, and this brings us down there. So same kind of experience. And I know this is redundant and repetitive, but at the same time, if we move the, if we remove any kind of uncertainty, and we maybe create not to be like super repetitive, but an experience that the kids understand what's coming next. They know when I see something like this, I can watch the welcome video, front facing video from my teacher, and then I might be able to watch a little bit of instruction. But again, this doesn't have to be video. That could be a screenshot of a reading. That could be a graphic that you're talking about. You can even add audio there, and I'll demo that process in a minute. But we're just trying to create something that kids can navigate relatively independently. They move on to the next activity, right? They push it down. Now again, same idea. Maybe you use a visible thinking routine. In this case, I'm asking the students to do, I used to think, but now I think. Now my suggestion here is maybe we use a tool, for example, like one, two, three apps. And what one, two, three apps allows us to do, I'll just jump to this really quickly. One, two, three apps allows you to record audio right here with the voice recorder. You can do an audio recording, and then the process is download that audio to your laptop or, or Chromebook, upload it to Google Drive just by dragging and dropping, and then once it's uploaded, when you're back here in your digital workspace where the kids are working, if they go to the insert menu and that audio is already in Google Drive, it's insert audio from Google Drive, and maybe they go to the most recent audio file, and they can click on that audio file, and that gets added into their notebook, give it a second to load, and there it is. Now the only thing we have to be kind of aware and careful of, and there's the student reflection, audio reflection. Now the only thing we have to be aware and careful of is in both instances, with record to slides and with inserted audio, by default, those files are private to this person that created them. So what I like to do with any video I make with record to slides, I've taken that folder in Google Drive, and I'll show you what I mean here. Give me one second to jump over to Google Drive. I take that folder in Google Drive, and let me just show you what it looks like. It's right here. Record to Slides makes a video for, makes a folder for you. I'll take that folder, go to the sharing settings of the folder, and make it anyone with the link can view. Therefore, if I use Record to Slides, that video is automatically gonna be open to my students. 
The other thing I do, and you could ask your students to do the same thing, I have a folder in my Google Drive account called Raw Audio for Slides. When I re record any audio with one, two, three apps, I drag it to that folder, and similar to the other folder with video, I take that folder ahead of time, I set the, set the sharing preferences to anyone with the link can view. So that's kind of the back end of making all this audio and video work. Let's get back into the notebook here. So the kids are done for the day, maybe they close this out, they land back on the kind of landing page, and now I'm just gonna simply advance to activity three. Again, redundant setup. I know it might seem like a little bit kind of repetitive, but I think if we remove any confusion, we allow kids to navigate, we could have a, a higher success of them kind of engaging with the content, and we can focus on the ideas and the learning and not kind of navigating digital spaces. So now they're done. Let's move on to one last idea for this whole setup. Now, one of the challenges, and I recognize this challenge, is that I used to have 120 students, for example, total between my five sections of history classes. It's a lot of kind of individual slides and notebooks to jump into. So as a way to maybe remedy that, we move to the end of the notebook, right? So there's one more activity. The kids are going to do one more reflection or answer one more question or do one more assignment. And I have a workspace here that says student image of offline work goes here. So you could absolutely have kids work offline on a dry erase board, on a piece of paper, whatever it might be, and they can go insert image from camera. And what that will do is it'll turn on their front facing camera. They can, so I'm having a little bit of like scrolling difficulty. There we go. Insert image from camera. It will turn on their front facing camera. You'll see it'll pop on. Here's my front facing camera. This is where I can like hold up my work or whatever I'm doing and snap a photo and drop that right into my slide. So that's possible. Now what I've added in here is like, okay, you've made it. One final task here. I want you to fill out this Google form. And the thinking behind that is the Google form will kind of um, curate all of those responses and condense them down to one spreadsheet where you can see how every student across the entire number of classes might be doing as a quick formative check-in, um, some way to get a sense of what's happening without having to jump into every notebook. Now that links to a Google form. There's no reason why you couldn't embed these experiences throughout the notebook. You might have an image of like a Flipgrid icon. Click here to go to the Flipgrid question. There's a link associated with the question. You might have a synth icon. Click here to go to synth to do an audio reply so I can hear your thinking. And the, the advantage to go into something like Flipgrid or Synth or Google Forms is all of those responses are curated into one location. So that's the idea. Like I think that this is, I think it's viable. I think it's possible to do this kind of build. And my hope is that you don't do something exactly like this. Maybe the template is a bit of inspiration. But what I'm also going to do is in the comments below, I'll put the link to this view only template that you can absolutely make a copy of to get started on your own, kind of building these multi-day, maybe entire unit long, kind of digital workspaces that can allow students to reflect with video, maybe even reflect with audio, archive their offline work. And again, to just to kind of repeat the purpose and the intention, they can navigate this on their own. We're taking the instructional content, melding it with the workspace, to make it so we can do something like push this out on a Monday morning or a Sunday night and have students working through it all week. So even in a hybrid model, when they're in class, this is their workspace. When they're at home, they can continue to progress forward. So one model, I, thought, I hope it's helpful. I hope this kind of gives you some vision for what digital workspaces can look like. And in this case, in a Google Slides format. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to keep pushing out as many video, videos as I can. Um, feel free to connect with me on social media. I'll put that link in the comments as well. Let me know what video you'd like to see next or any help I can provide. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.